So now we need to come down and create a watermark height and also a watermark width value. And we can easily do this uh, using the image sx function. So it will type image sx. And um, here we just need to supply one argument, and that's just the uh, image we've already loaded in. So we've got the watermark height, so the uh, image watermark height, using this function and just supplying the already opened image. So we'll do exactly the same thing uh, for the width as well. Okay, so now we've successfully loaded in the watermark and the watermark height and width from this watermark that we've already created. We've basically here created a new image file in GD, but from this. So we've almost duplicated the file, if you like. Okay, so the next thing to do is set up our canvas. Now we need to set up our canvas um, by basically using our image create true color function and that's going to go inside an image um, an image a variable called image sorry so uh, the function we need to use is image create true color and we need to supply this with two values and that is going to be watermark height in fact, it's the width first, so we always take in a width first, and water mark height. Now we're going to redefine the same variable, and we're going to say um, image create from JPEG. So this is the important part. We're creating the image from our source. So remember up here we called our value source, or the value that we're reading in source. So we can just pop in source there. So you can see now why I created this variable. It's a lot easier than, than keep referencing uh, this long, if you like, get um, method way of reading in a value. So now what we need to do is get the image size. So by image size, I mean the image as in the phone image that I showed you earlier. This is the size of the source image that we're loading in using this line here. So what we want to do is we want to create a new variable. So we'll uh, name it properly. We'll call it image underscore size. And uh, we're going to be using a function called get image size. Now get image size isn't actually a GD function itself. This can be used without GD. So if you find that you might need this function um, elsewhere and you might need to use this function and you don't have uh, GD installed, you're more than welcome to use this um, as it's not part of the GD library. So obviously we're getting the image file from the uh, image size, sorry, from the source, like I said earlier. So we just supply it with the argument source, which is the uh, source data we're reading in. Now you'll notice, just just to make note, that we're using the image sx function here and here to grab the watermark height and width. However, why are we using this get image function here? The reason um, we get image size function here. The reason we're using this down here as opposed to the image sx is we haven't loaded in the source. Um, well, we have, but what we want to do is we want to read um, the get image size from the source, um, which is the file that we're supplying with. So we're using this um, without loading the image in first. Um, and as we've done here, create image from PM, we've, we've used this uh, function here. But here we're just using the get image size, and this is going to read it in as an array. So now what we can do is we can set two variables that's x and y. Now these two variables are going to be the positioning um, for um, they're going to be the positioning for our um, watermark. Now remember I said that we're going to have it 10 pixels from the bottom um, and um, 10 pixels from the side. So we need to take this into account when we're minusing values because um, let's say uh, my text editor at the moment was um, an image. The top here would be at zero and then we'd go all the way down here positively and all the way down here positively. So what we want to do is we want to start here and minus 10 and minus 10 so we're going to end up around here. Then we can display our watermark here. So let's change this x um, variable. And like I said, image size is read in as a, um, an array. And the first element of the array, so element 0, let's just type it out so we can see what we're doing. Um, is equal to the width of the image. So the first one, which is zero, is is uh, equal to the image uh, width. So now what we can do is say the image width overall 
um, minus the watermark width. Remember, we got the watermark um, height and width over here earlier. Um, I've just noticed that the um, I've supplied the wrong function in here. Um, image um, SY is for height, and um, image SX is for the width. So uh, let's just change these around so they're in order as we're um, supplying them. So yeah, sorry about that. If you go back, if you're following this tutorial as it is, we've got image SX and Y. So we've got X and Y for the width and the height. So the watermark width is now going to be minus 10. Because, like I said, I want it 10 pixels away um, width-wise. Now height-wise, I want it 10 pixels away as well. But this time for um, the image size, which is now an array, um, we want that to one because that's going to represent the height. So one is representing the height. Um, so let's um, do exactly the same. We're using exactly the same structure. We want to say watermark height minus 10. Okay, so let's just recap on what we've done. We've loaded the image in as um, a file name. Um, we've created the um, logo, which is the watermark evidently. Um, uh, we've created that in from a PNG file because we're using a PNG file. We've grabbed the width and the height of the watermark so we can do things with it down here. We've created um, an image and loaded in our um, image that we've created from our JPEG. So we've image create from JPEG source, which is uh, the file name that we've loaded in. We've grabbed the image size and we've created the X and Y position for the watermark, which is 10 pixels away from the um, edge of the um, image. Okay, so the next thing to do is to use the image copy merge function. Now this has got um, lots of parameters that we're going to throw at it, some of which we need to discuss, some of which we probably don't, uh, but I'm going to try and go through all of them. So the image copy merge function looks like this. Now what is this function going to do? This function is responsible for taking um, one image and um, basically merging it with another image. And we're going to say, um, we're going to, well, give give the parameters to this function of how we want to merge. And by merging, we're doing exactly the same thing as applying a um, watermark onto our image. 